the sole survivor. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. Vesna Volovic, a Serbian flight attendant, was a sole survivor of a mid-air explosion of a jetliner over Czechoslovakia in 1972. Czechoslovakia. There we go. Boom, sh- I, boom. So this is going to be a story of survival. Okay. And it's going to be a story of celebrity. Ooh. It's going to be a story of scandal. And then it's going to kind of end in a whimper. Hmm. This is a little bit of a fail on a couple of levels. Oh, man. It can't be a fail unless they uh, have a win at some point, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't if you got to you got to have something worth losing. Mm -hmm. But it's a pretty it's a pretty miraculous story. I mean, unless you don't agree with the Guinness Book of World Records. <gasps> My Bible. I, I know. You swear <laughs> on that every day and night. Ugh. So Vesna Volovic wasn't originally scheduled, but due to a clerical error, she was on board working on January 26, 1972, and about an hour into the flight, I think maybe 46 minutes, I've seen a couple of different times, but it's about an hour into the flight, a briefcase bomb, perhaps courtesy of Croatian nationalists, exploded during JAT flight 367 over the Czech village of Srbiska. Yeah. It always starts with like they're not supposed to be on the plane. You know, they weren't supposed to work that day. They were they had other plans. And there were two people with a similar name. What? There was either two Volovics, I believe, or is it two Vesnas? But it was a clerical error. So, yes, she was not. It's like a, the way a lot of movies start. The guy wasn't supposed to be working today. Yeah, it's like a rom-com turned very bad. You're not going to find too much romance in here, so. Oh. So the baggage area exploded, and the plane crashed. The only thing that saved Vesna Volovic was she was wedged in by a food cart. As it plummeted towards Earth, and there was snow on the mountain, so that padded. Oh, my God. Some of the fall. uh, Trees broke some of the fall, but (sighs) she fell. 33,000 feet. Oh, my God. And just the relief of hitting a snow-capped mountain wedged next to, like, a Diet Coke-filled ice, dirty ice tray food cart. Uh, Bruno Uh Hanke Uh was a villager who discovered her and actually had been a medic during World War II, so was able to kind of stabilize her until... That's, if if anyone were to find me after a crash that I wasn't on a plane I wasn't supposed to be on, can it be a World War II medic, please? Today's episode is sponsored by Best Fiends. We love talking about true crime, haunted places, paranormal, and weird history, but sometimes we also need a break, and Best Fiends is that break. Best Fiends is that mental palate cleanser that has challenging puzzles, but is a casual game that anyone can play, but it's made for adults, but it is for anyone. I just crossed level 300, and there's something so satisfying about it. Best Fiends updates the game monthly with new levels and events, so it never gets old. Best Fiends does not require internet to play, so you don't need to worry about Wi-Fi access or using your cell data. When I need a break from editing, my go-to is Best Fiends. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. And she was entered in the Guinness Book of World Records. And that is the record for surviving a fall from a plane by a lot. And who presented her the award? Oh, my God. Sir Paul McCartney. What? Imagine that. You're excited. I'll crash. I'll crash. You want me to crash? I'll do it. Paul McCartney doesn't. He already did his. He's like, I already did my one. He's tired. He told Guinness Book World Records, you get one. You get one. And it's going to be her. 
It's not who makes the biggest puzzle <laughs> of mushrooms the, where we exactly. had. Exactly. It's not the the biggest, longest high five or something. No. <laughs> she was one of only 28 passengers and crew members to survive. Hospitalized for months, she suffered a skull fracture, two broken legs, three broken vertebrae, temporarily paralyzed from the waist down and in a coma for a short time. Oh, my God. She has... No memory of this. Thank God. Thank God. You know, our bodies go into shock. Thank God she does not realize all of the shit that happened to her body that day. Whoa. After being taken to a hospital in Prague, Vesna Volovic spent several days in a coma recovering. Her physicians believed her low blood pressure kept her heart from bursting on impact with the mountainside. I don't know the science behind that, but the fact that she had low blood pressure... (sighs) Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, your heart isn't working as hard. So even if you're in danger of your heart bursting, not a good place to be. She remembered greeting passengers for the flight and didn't remember anything else until she saw her parents and when they, she came into the hospital room. So she became somewhat of a celebrity. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of the best scenario to have this horrific, traumatic, you know, hugely violent thing happen to you. To just not remember... To be in the hospital, to be rescued. But all you could see are pictures of the plane and uh-huh. which exist. So it's Oof. probably pretty traumatizing. Yeah. So she was a celebrity and a hero in Yugoslavia. She also became a bit of an outspoken kind of political dissident. Mm. Kind of speaking out against the injustices of the government. That's great. Which they love. Uh, yeah. It's They really, really... Especially in the, in the early 90s, yeah. to speak out against, they too. love it. There's, there's t- plenty to talk about, you know. She spoke out against the Serbian government, but they really couldn't do anything because she was a hero. She yeah. was, you, you know, she, I don't know if you've seen the movie Unbreakable. You've seen the movie Unbreakable? Yeah, I've not seen it though. It the plot is not giving anything away. The plot is about a guy who survives a train crash and he's the only one to survive and no one knows why. So, similar, is that like the leftovers? Maybe. I haven't seen that. Me either. Oh. Have you seen anything? I don't watch anything. You just know names of things. I only read book covers. So she participated in anti-government protest, but she avoided arrest due to her celebrity status. And this is where a little fail comes in. There were smear campaigns that would result challenging the narrative of her survival, a.k.a. why it happened and how far she fell. Now, she doesn't remember. Yeah. So it's not really for her to be like, Counting the feet as she fell. Also, fuck off, respectfully. Like, this woman is a survivor. She's gone through so much trauma. Really, you're going to haggle about a couple thousand feet? According to the New York Times, there were some journalists in Prague in 2009 that challenged the account. They came to the conclusion that a DC-9 was mistakenly shot down by the Czech Air Force at an altitude of only 800 meters or 2,625 feet and claims it was a fabrication by communist authorities to cover up a mistake. So they shot down Mm. their own plane and they said, no, it was a briefcase bomb by some nationalists. Wow. And it was only 2,600 feet. Regardless, Uh, it's still an insane story of survival. It's crazy. And according to The Guardian, a spokesperson for Guinness World Records told German paper Taz, it seems at the time Guinness was duped by this swindle just like the rest of the media. Wow. And Vesna Volovic oh. really didn't know any better. And she wasn't – it's not like she, they were like, hey, listen, it was only you, – you only survived – you were only the lone survivor of a plane crash. It was only like less than 3,000 feet. And mm-hmm. she's like, okay, well, we're going to say it's 33,000. Yeah, I'm going to really pull one over on them. Was married, got divorced, she had some PTSD, survivor's guilt. It was tough, as yeah. as anyone can imagine. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even Sir Paul McCartney can't take all that away. It helps. It helps. Definitely Listen, does not hurt. Hugging a beetle definitely helps. She lived on a small pension with her three cats and died in 2016 at age 66. It's not that old. You think the cats had something to do with it? <laughs> Is that your go-to? <laughs> I want to question this cat. Are you working with the the the, the checks to, to discredit her? Running a smear campaign. 